Hello and welcome to the Overland Journal podcast. I'm your host, Scott Brady, and I'm joined today by Harry and Chloe from the Landy Expedition. Now, I bumped into them when I was in Nairobi, Kenya. In fact, we were driving two opposite directions on the same road. and We were able to connect, have lunch, and hear a lot about their journey. I was so inspired by their trip and the time that they've taken to explore Africa that I really wanted to have the conversation with them on the podcast. They both had regular jobs and they decided to leave those behind, buy the Land Rover their dreams, ship it down to South Africa. They actually had an Alucab camper fitted at that time. And then they drove it steadily up the East Coast of Africa before deciding to start to make their way uh, back South and West again. So very cool conversation about traveling as a couple, how they earn money on the road as uh, content creators, and how they really kind of made the decision, made that leap to go and explore the world. So please enjoy my conversation with Harry and Chloe. And a special thanks to Kuat Racks for their support of this week's podcast. Their new Ibex has landed. In fact, it's overlanded. This groundbreaking bed rack effortlessly handles substantial loads both on and off the grid. It's constructed from lightweight yet durable aluminum, and it boasts a ballistic black powder coating that's made for all the nature you can throw at it. It's available in seven different frame sizes, including the Gladiator now, to accommodate most truck models, and it's equipped with telescoping crossbars, numerous T-channels, and a versatile full and half-height configuration. It's the Ibex from Kuat, which they now have available the new Ibex panel kit. These panels easily mount to your existing Ibex frame and they help to protect your gear from the elements. Plus, they're fully locking, offering security while still allowing quick access to the bed when you need it. It's going to be available later this summer, so visit kuat.com for more information. Thanks again, Kuat. Chloe and Harry, thank you so much for being on the podcast with me today. It was so fun to connect with you guys over the last couple of weeks mm-hmm. because we're yeah. both bouncing around Africa. Yeah. Yeah. And we just had a great little lunch. If you are all ever in Nairobi, go to Cultiva. It's uh, yes. become a little obsession of mine yeah. over Very the last good. few days. So it was, was nice really to nice. have a yeah. nice to have a proper mm-hmm. cappuccino. I think we had a passion fruit. We had about seven of those. We? <laughs> <laughs> I think we would have kept them, kept them coming. They were, they were non-alcoholic, but I wanted more. Yeah, and I, yeah <laughs> for sure. It was delicious, delicious. So. Well, I'm so excited to talk to you both about your adventure. I think you have such an inspiring story. So let's go back to um, not so much the beginning, but where did you both grow up in the UK? So I grew up. Uh, close to the south coast okay. um, in Hampshire. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, and me, uh, just just north of London on a farm. So, yeah, south yeah, coast a, of England. <laughs> what a cool, what a cool thing to to do. And in, in growing up in the south, I noticed when I traveled in the south in that part of the UK that it was actually quite a bit more temperate. I was surprised by that. Yeah. And there wasn't as many people there as you'd think, given the fact that it was such a temperate yeah. part of the UK. Yeah. So, yeah, that's really beautiful. Yeah. And then how was, it, how was it growing up on a farm in the, in the UK? What were some of the things you learned about life growing up on a farm in the UK? <laughs> I always tell stories about how we used to uh, get vehicles from people that were scrapping vehicles in the local village. And uh, we'd strip them all all down, take the doors out, the windscreen, and like rally them around the farm. So <laughs> <laughs> we used to get up to some fun, fun stuff. Yeah. I, I think that that happens on every farm in the world. Yeah, for sure. I don't, I don't think it matters which country. Yeah. Because I, I, after I was out of the military, I spent a few years living on my aunt and uncle's ranch and kind of the same thing. Mm. You know, Nissan patrols, yeah. you know, no windshield. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. We used to get cars stuck and I'd uh, run down to the farm and pick up my mum's discovery and uh, <laughs> quickly whip it up the top of the field and drag everything out. So. You've got some stories. I yeah. don't know if they're uh, appropriate for online. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was, it, it was good fun. And you do learn a lot of like small mechanical yeah. skills and 
how to yeah just just fix things when you need to and make a plan make a plan yeah i was going to say that (laughs) and and you also spent so much time outdoors which is quite rare in in the uk not everybody gets to do that there's Mm. a lot of people who work indoors given weather and things like that so i would suspect that it it uh, also influenced your love of being outside yeah 100 percent. we have a woodland where we'd often go and camp for the weekend and we still do now i mean Mm -hmm. when we were back in the uk a few months ago yeah we went up there camping and Mm. just love it i I really love the place Mm -hmm. you know and and chloe what was some of your experiences along the coast or growing up that inspired your interest in travel to begin with Oh, I think I've always loved nature and being outside. Um, so I think, yeah, that has really inspired me to travel and stuff. Mm. And my parents did um, a big trip to Australia and New Zealand when, just before they got married, just before they had me. And I've always heard so many stories about their experiences and some pictures and things. And I mm. think that has always been in my mind that I have wanted to travel and see the world because of the experience that they had. Isn't it in- incredible how important our parents are to not only our self-confidence or belief in what's possible, yeah. but a lot of times with the inspiration of what's possible, Yeah, you know, with, with how close my parents were, it just showed me it modeled like what a healthy relationship could be. Yeah. And it sounds like your parents traveling and seeing the world just showed you like that's normal and that's, okay. it's possible. Yeah, absolutely. And made it something that I knew I definitely wanted to experience for myself. Mm. So, and what were some of your first adventures, your first travels? Oh, um, I mean, I was lucky enough to go on holidays with my family every summer to France and Spain and places in the UK and things, which, yeah, I was very lucky to do that every year. And then when I started going traveling myself, going into Europe and things, um, going to different cities in Europe. So not really so much the camping side of stuff that Harry and I do now. Mm. That's definitely something that I have experienced since meeting Harry and he kind of introduced that more into my life. So it was probably more cities actually, which is crazy because it's so different to what I do Mm. now and what I enjoy now. Yeah, but they both are so great. Yeah. Like cities are filled with energy and and possibility and and unique personalities Mm. And rich cultures, exactly, oftentimes. and history. When do you feel like in that transition from traveling with your family to traveling more solo? When do you feel like you transition towards from being more of a tourist to being more of a traveler? Was there a point mm. that you kind of remember that you 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 weren't so tight on the itinerary and you started to be more just in the moment of of the trip? I think that's probably come since we have traveled together more so um just being quite you know I guess free-spirited in a way and being quite okay with not having so much of a plan and just going for it and seeing what the day or the month or whatever where it takes us and I think that's come more from the way that we travel together like we were discussing earlier, when you are on a shorter trip, you do want to squeeze all these things in so you have an itinerary. But the way that we've been fortunate enough to travel for a long period of time, you can just go, oh, let's go here. Or you meet someone and they take you this way. You know, it's way more flexible and free flowing. Yeah, I think when we were talking about that earlier, I think the longer the trip is, I think the more that that type of planning is actually doesn't really serve you. Mm-hmm. Because then you get attached to ideas of yeah. how something is supposed to go, For sure. and then something happens logistically that makes that either impossible or impractical. Mm-hmm. So, I think the longer the trip, the more that you're better off planning like the next couple moments. Yeah, um, and Absolutely. then and then being open to the idea that that next moment that comes up may be so incredible that you choose to. Yeah. You choose to stay. In fact, I, re- I remember a, a good friend of mine, Patrice, out of France. He had been riding around the world with his wife on a tandem bicycle. And they were doing that planning just one day at a time. And they got to Brisbane in Australia and they just decided that that was it. Like there was no more planning because that's where they wanted to have uh, their family. Wow, that's that's where awesome. they wanted to have their family. So it, I think that being 
not being too attached to that is important. And I know that for me, in some of my travels where I had to be, there were so many logistics, there were so many vehicles, there was so much at play that I don't remember those trips as well Mm. because it was such a blur Mm. of, of tasks and, and Mm -hmm. requirements that had to be done. I also learned a lot too. So I'm, I'm not suggesting that there wasn't benefits because there was, but I have found on this trip that like I, like I was telling you earlier, I didn't even start my first visa for this next leg until I got to South Africa yeah. because I just didn't know what was going to, yeah, like were there going to be delays Was something's going to happen, you know? So yeah. I just didn't even worry about it until I had to worry about it. Yeah. It's so unpredictable here. Yeah. And have yeah. you found that, Harry, for yourself, that you've adjusted well to a bit of serendipity? For sure, yeah. I, I have always liked structure in the past, I think. Um, but actually learning to be more in the moment mm. has, has been really good for me because I'm always looking at the next, the next thing. Mm. So it has been a difficult adjustment to do that. But And do you think that that's part of like your entrepreneurial spirit because you own your own business? before you started the journey and you were talking earlier about how challenging it was for you to let go of what had become part of your identity, your Mm -hmm. own, your own business. Talk a little bit about how you gave yourself permission to go do something incredibly irresponsible and ship a, (laughs) ship a vehicle to South Africa and, and head off without a plan. Yeah, I guess I, I, I don't know. We just, we ended up just deciding one day, right, let's do it. And, um, it kind of just became, we talked about it for a long time. Um, and then when we just decided to do it, it became like, right, well, that's what we're doing. So everything else started Mm. tearing or Mm. teeling down. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Starting, I basically I booked myself out for a year. So if my customers were getting in touch, they would, I'd say, well, I'm booked out for a year, so yeah. it'll be next year. Um, and when it seemed impossible to walk away from my business, I, the more we talked about it, the more it was like this is actually a good time to do it. Um, yeah, it takes a lot of courage, though. Mm. Yeah, especially you said you had been doing it for seven years. Yeah, and from nothing as well. Yeah. So I felt like I had built up a career for myself and a future. Yeah. And I was working on that and uh, kind of just has stopped. But honestly, I don't think I don't think I'll go back to it when I get back. I think I have so much energy for new ideas and new projects. Mm. That uh, it's maybe been that's one of the biggest gifts that the trip will teach 100%. you. Hundred percent. Sure. Anything is possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You guys just drove around Africa. Over, so anything's possible. Yeah. So tell me how you guys met. We actually met at a music festival. That's fun. Yeah. yeah. So um, you, have, you have shared music interests. That's yeah. always a good yeah, place to start. Sure. Yeah. Then- so it was on the Isle of Wight, which is just off of the south coast. Okay. Uh, and obviously, Harry growing up north of London, me growing up the south coast, we're a few hours from each other. And um, he just came and said hi and. <laughs> the rest is history. <laughs> yeah, that, takes cur- that takes courage too. I mean, there's, there's like a the great things in life come from taking a little bit of a risk. Yeah, yeah, it was a risk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Paid off there. Yeah. Yeah. That was what eight, eight, eight years, years ago. ago. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. yeah, that's incredible. And then, so how long have you been planning this trip? Actually, not very long at all. Mm. Um, it, it took it took a bit of time for you to decide. Yes, I'm going to put bi- my business on hold or stop this particular business for us to go and do this trip. And so we were shipping with our friends, mm. Addy and MH, and they had a date at which they wanted to ship their car. And they were like, "Put your car in a container with us and let's do it." So we kind of only had maybe six months where we were doing our planning but mm. in that process we were doing a full rebuild, full rebuild basically yeah. of our and defender. you already had the defender yeah yeah and what what year is the car 2000 okay and it's a three-door mm. it looks like and did it have a hard top when you shipped it or did you decide to ship it without that because of the conversion you were planning 
Yes, it had a it had a hard top. Yeah. Um, when we bought the vehicle, it was as it would have come out the factory. So we've done quite a lot to it, mm. yep. including a chassis swap and wow, that yeah, is a lot of work. Place the whole new road engine tub or the gull wings. Yeah. At yeah. the time, I, I think I bought it six years ago, and at the time, I didn't have enough money to buy a Land Rover really. So I ended up buying probably the worst one on the market. <laughs> But uh, we, we got up to, it was in Ripon in North Yorkshire in England. And um, I, I drove the car and it, it felt nice. The engine felt good. The gearbox felt good. But I knew the chassis was rotten. Mm-hmm. I thought, well, it drives well, so I'll buy it. I know I need to replace the chassis. And on the way home, the engine blew up. Oh, no. So <laughs> no. Within uh, the first couple of months of owning a Land Rover, we did a chassis swap, an engine swap. and everything else Mm -hmm. um but it then became like the base vehicle for a perfect yeah overlanding rig not that we knew we were going to do that at the time i mean i had interest in buying a roof tent and things like that and going camping but we never never thought we were buying it for 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 this no not at all yeah. yeah, that's a big step. And then yeah. did you guys find that there was anything or any maybe other travelers that inspired you to want to go explore Africa or was it was it something that was always in the back of your mind? Well, I, I don't know really. I think Africa is always somewhere that I think is in, interested and intrigued both of us, but I don't think we ever thought we'd be traveling to this many African countries over this period of time in the way we're doing it. Mm. Um, but I think once you got the car and we started doing camping, the Land Rover community is a very big community mm-hmm. of, you know, very enthusiastic, passionate people. And as soon as we kind of got the car and started doing camping, we were just immersed in this Land Rover community, yeah. which was amazing. And we met a lot of people who have inspired us who have mm. traveled a lot and Andy and MH, Pat, mm. you know, your friend Stan's got a defender, Johnny, like lots of people that we know who are good friends of ours who travel and have these kind of vehicles. So that was definitely an inspiration. Yeah. And then that then snowballed into maybe we should start a little Instagram. And then once you're on Instagram, you see what everyone else is doing and then you're like it's like a new wow. world isn't it yeah. i want to be doing wanna, what they're I doing there. I yeah there. I exactly get, i want to be swimming in that pool or whatever. <laughs> for I sure think for africa though i don't know whether the seed was planted for me back in 2015 when i was in south africa and lesotho mm. yeah i was riding bikes around south africa and lesotho and yeah yeah just that like raw adventure you experience up there i don't know if that maybe was a yeah. Yeah, see, so back then. Oh, I mean, yeah, but Lesotho is incredible. Yeah. yeah. It's just such, it feels like you're going to another world. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. It's the yeah. kingdom the mountain, in the, the sky. Mountain, the mountain kingdom. Yeah. So that leads a question to some of your guys' earlier trips together. You didn't use a vehicle. You used motorcycles. In, mm-hmm. And you have a, or you have a real love for riding motorcycles. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your travels in Asia. Did you rent bikes? Did you buy bikes and then sell them? How did you guys do some of your early trips? We went out there with backpacks, really, and we, we were backpacking around. Mm. And, and there were a few um, routes that the Grand or Top Gear had done yeah. that we really wanted to do. Oh, like fun. The yeah. High Van Pass. In and, Vietnam. In yeah. Vietnam. And then there was also a route from uh, Chiang Mai to Pai in northern Thailand Yep. Um, that we, we rented bikes. Or a bike. Was it scooters or? No, it was like a 250 Honda. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Kind mm-hmm. of off road tires. Sure. Um, but still quite a small bike. And you um, rode two up on that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Put a little bag on the back and Perfect. went off. That's all yeah. you need. Yeah. yeah. And that was, that was really, really good yeah. fun. Amazing. And what, what did you, because now you've done this about as light and minimal as you can get yeah 250 motorcycle two up with a little bag on the back yeah. and now you pretty much have your home with you yeah. in a large vehicle uh, what were some of the things that you learned on the bike that helped you on decisions with the truck god i think it was so different yeah um never really put the two together no actually not compared the two as 
you know, what we would pack or what we would plan for but one or the other. Yeah, certainly when you're on a bike, you are way more immersed in that culture at, totally. and in the surroundings. Yeah, you're 100%. totally dependent. Yeah, yeah. you've got your helmet and then you're just you're open whereas yeah. when you're in your car you almost have like a bit of a I don't know if you want to call it a safety barrier like, but I guess it yeah. is it is a bit of a barrier that blocks you off from like other I people so. or the elements or whatever so there is that is a big difference actually isn't mm. it yeah whereas so many people are no matter where you go in the world a, a motorcycle seems very accessible and it seems like their neighbor has one or they have one or whatever in it. Yeah. And it's, I think it's, it's such a shared, like even when we were having lunch today, the, the guy was telling us yeah. about his motorcycle yeah. journeys. Yeah. So there, there is something about motorcycles that is, it, it really flattens the experience where you're just another motorcycle on the road. And I mean, sometimes if you're on a GS or something, it is. It stands out, yeah. but for the most part, if you're on local bikes like you guys were, yeah. mm. um, you really are. Like if it's cold, you're cold. If it's hot, you're hot. If, yeah, and then you're just in the flow of everybody, everybody else. else. Yeah. Whereas once you're in a vehicle like a Land Rover, which you guys, your Land Rover is is big and lifted, aggressive tires and a camper on the back, so it has a lot of presence on the road. Yeah. So you definitely are in a different position. Mm, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I do think any vehicle that you travel in, when you're riding it or driving it yourself, it is just so freeing yeah. to just travel on the open road. Mm. Right. And you experience so much more than you would if you were flying in and out of destinations and Overland. stuff. Overlanding, however that looks for mm, you, yeah. is just such an experience and so freeing. Mm. Yeah, and I, I think I, the, what I find is just all of the, benefit of experiencing everything from this border crossing to the next one yeah you you don't you don't go to just you do, certainly do go to tourist destinations but you get to see everything between the two in between yeah. yeah which a lot of people don't see yeah no and that's probably where some of my best memories have come yeah, from mm-hmm. ours too actually mm-hmm. is is like you're totally off the beaten path mm-hmm. yeah absolutely For sure so chloe now you had a career that allowed you to work from the road. Yeah. So was that part of what gave you guys some confidence to leave? Is that you still felt like you could generate a little bit of revenue I think, for your guys' travels? Yeah, I think so. We did work hard before leaving to yeah. try and save up as much money as we could for the trip. Um, but being able to work remotely has been amazing um for financially it helps a huge mm. amount but also i like I, I like working you know having like a bit of normality as well as the traveling side of what we do i've actually in, enjoyed it and mm. i think needed it um because you've kind of missed that in a way haven't you mm. we were saying this at lunch as well is when you're working every day and you you just want to be traveling or want to be on holiday or want to just have some time off, but then when you actually get only time off, you miss the normal mm-hmm. structure and getting your head into something and having a purpose. And mm-hmm. I we were saying this, it's just the balance and I'm grateful that I've had that balance because yeah. I think I needed that. Uh, let the audience know what work you do, yeah. what kind of work you do, <clears throat> and how your clients and your opportunities Okay. have changed as a result of your trip. Yeah. So the work that I do from back home is kind of is separate to the opportunities that we've now had since mm-hmm. traveling. Um so just managing social media platforms and doing website work, marketing plans basically for different companies back at home. And from the experience I've had with that and since we started our Instagram and things, it's definitely enabled me to know what to do to kind of build our platform a bit more and with that we've kind of when we got the car we got a camera as well and we're not professional photographers but we just thought let's capture some of what we're doing and it's kind of evolved into creating content for companies and also filming our adventures and putting weekly youtube videos up which it's a lot of work it is a lot of work weekly videos yeah and who does the editing me and who does the shooting both of us. Yeah. So you just, yeah. Either one of you just grabs the camera. Yeah. Yeah. 
interestingly enough, though, the content creating for other brands has also sort of integrated into your um, yeah. business as well. Yeah. Because now you, now you approach companies and say, well, I can run your marketing efforts, but also create content yeah. to do that as well. Yeah. And interestingly enough, we just picked up a, a new contract in Nairobi a couple of weeks ago. So the two have yeah. sort of rolled into one, yeah. really. And traveling and meeting people, you're networking, basically, yeah, sure. which is awesome. And it's, yeah, it's definitely opened up a lot more opportunity for us. And so when this trip comes to an end, whenever that may be, um, we've got exciting things planned that, you know, the work that we've done on this trip has opened up this for us. Mm. And then recently you started to bring your Starlink along. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And has that made work easier or do you just work more now? It's definitely made it easier. I think before we had the Starlink, we were planning where we were camping based on what I Everlander said about oh, the Wi Fi speed. Yeah. And also spending quite a lot of money on data some countries their data plans are expensive expensive, more than europe would be and so we were rinsing through our data trying to upload videos and do work and stuff so the starlink has meant that we haven't had to rely on that and not buying sim cards and just have peace of mind of knowing that you can just smash out a bit of work wherever you are and it just happens so quickly yeah also the uploading could take so long that we would often find we sat at a campsite waiting for a video to upload. Yeah. And now with the Starlink, we actually use it. I don't know if you do, but we use it when we're moving. And totally. It, it, yeah, works it works fine. So we can just leave the laptop uploading while we're doing a five, six hour journey. And then we haven't wasted any time sat around twiddling our thumbs waiting for a video mm-hmm. to upload. Yeah, so for sure. it has been pretty, pretty good. So your Instagram is the landy expedition yeah and then what's your youtube channel the same it's the same the okay. landy expedition cool. yeah. yeah awesome so they you guys should be checking out this amazing content <laughs> so um one of the things that i think is important for because your story again is so inspirational of you, you guys had regular jobs and you decided that you didn't want a regular life that you yeah. wanted something unusual or something that was more suited to your to your passions um, if you were to give some advice to either your younger self or maybe a nephew or a cousin or something like that that was getting ready to do the same journeys as you, um, looking back on what you've learned over this last year, full time on the road, what would you say you'd give some advice to those listening? Well, it's interesting because uh, I think we wouldn't have been able to do what we've done if I hadn't have earned money in my business like building the vehicle that cost we we pretty much paid for just about everything on the vehicle you know yeah um building that up i could we couldn't have done it in that vehicle if i hadn't earned the money or we hadn't earned the money to do it um so what I, i wanted to say do it when you're a little bit younger start younger um to anyone that was listening but you do need to be able to save up enough money to buy a vehicle um it doesn't need to be kitted out the way we've done ours so you can simplify things mm-hmm. a lot more than than what we have yeah um but yeah if, if you if you dream of doing it then just like put pen to paper and just start making a plan to do it yeah and whether that means saving up that money to buy that car then just do it yeah. and then once you've got it you don't need to spend thousands of pounds getting it out. Just go do little trips around your like local area and campsites and stuff. Um, work out what you need rather than what you want. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. That's a big thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, if you if you love it, then just make a plan to do it. Yeah, and that's what I'd say. Yeah. And a special thanks to Winnebago for their support of this week's podcast. Are you searching for the off grid, off road vehicle of your dreams? Meet the all-new Echo Sprinter, that's E-K-K-O, built on a rugged Mercedes all-wheel drive chassis with elevated ground clearance for rough terrain. This roomier adventure RV not only has a versatile living space for working remotely or just relaxing with the gang, but it also has a spacious gear garage too. Extend your off-grid stays thanks to impressive off-grid power and holding tanks, 
and all-season insulation extends your camping season. The end of the road is just the beginning for the all-new Echo Sprinter. To learn more, visit winnebago.com. Thanks, Winnebago. And do you guys have any any regrets or things you would have done different? Or you or did it did it really was it the dream you hoped that it it would be? I think it's been more than what I imagined it would be. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um we didn't know what to expect. No. And it wasn't I have to say it wasn't like a lifetime dream of ours to come to Africa and to overland in Africa. Yeah, it's, it's not something that we've been planning or thinking about or working towards mm. for a long time. But adventure is something that we always dream about and we do, every year we try and do a different adventure, whether that's small, which they have been up until now. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, coming here without really any expectations mm-hmm. and then just being totally immersed in so many different cultures, which Definitely. change every border crossing you go across. Yeah. Sure. The, the cultures change yeah. so much. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. It actually cross a border and, like, landscape's different, the people are different. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I also think it's... You don't have to overthink it too much. I think that's something that I probably did before we came away is mm. not worried but wanted to know everything and planning so that I knew a lot about each different country we'd go to, which is important to have an idea, but I think you can overthink it and you can get in your head and you can think this is no, this is not achievable for me. I mm. just definitely can't do this. And honestly, I didn't think that we would be doing this, but we are. And actually, once you get here, once you meet people, once you experience like the craziness that Africa can be sometimes, it's it's amazing and yeah, it's so feel, much easier you than feel you so alive in yeah. a place like this. Yeah. And I think it's because the people of Africa are so incredible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They like I have I have learned so much from mm-hmm. the people of Africa mm-hmm. of you know just having joy and you can see how much fun they have. Yeah. yeah. And, and they're not on their damn phones that much, yeah. if at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some of them don't even have a phone, which, you know, is a, a blessing in the modern day. Mm-hmm. And for, and I'm not to say that they don't, they don't deserve to have all the same access to those things that we do, mm-hmm. but because they don't have sometimes access to that, you see them, chasing each other around laughing and mm. swimming and For sure and and just being kids as yeah. opposed to glued to their screens yeah. like, totally like you see in the uk or in yeah. the us so and you 100%. see you see that more so when you're in the more remote areas where yeah. they where they really don't have much I, I remember driving through some villages in zimbabwe when we just got there and just colors the people smiling it was just like wow yeah. this is i've never seen anything like yeah. this before and and there's nothing around yeah they have their houses which are made of mud and they paint you know paint on the on the walls which is mm-hmm. really cool to see mm-hmm. but yeah other than that they just have yeah. themselves and and people work hard they people do work have hard. to oh, they work hard walk re- really really far yeah. to get water and then the farmland and the agriculture that we've All seen is just in, you know, plowing a whole field by hand and everyone is working from like the grandparent down to the child. They're all working. Mm. They're all making it happen. And that is really amazing to see the, like the, how much work people put in and also how happy people can be with, you know, not a lot. Yeah. You have your water, your food, your shelter, you know. Yeah, it doesn't seem like that happiness grows at the same rate of convenience or luxury or mm-hmm. comfort. Mm-hmm. In fact, it, it seems like the most wealthiest na- nations oftentimes have the most unhappy people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, powerful lessons. Yeah. So, Chloe, what would you say is your top one or two adventures or experiences that you had in this last year? Like, what was the one place that completely surprised you. You you know exactly what I'm going to say. <laughs> so you, you might have different different answers. Yeah. I ask you both. Don't say my answer. I think it's going to be your answer. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> so uh, then you have to pick another one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Start thinking. 
we drove up into Damaraland in Namibia and um, we were around the Bramberger mountain area, which is very remote. And uh, we just started driving one day and um, I was looking, I knew that there were desert elephants within that area. And so I just searched like, where can you find the desert elephants in Damaraland? And there's a dried up riverbed called the Ugab River. And so we just kind of started heading towards that way and spent four days totally isolated to drive along this dried up riverbed seeing nobody nothing yeah. elephant footprints elephant dung everywhere yeah. and just wild camping we then passed the doris crater then the yeah. burnt mountain and that's actually a hot spot for um oh what's it called uh geologists mm. because of the rock formations and stuff there's so much history and stuff there yeah. as well um so ancient almost isn't it and it mm. was just so beautiful so remote unplanned yeah and totally unplanned. we were running out of fuel we were running out of water we'd run out of food basically we were living off of like beans and rice <laughs> That's awesome. but it was just the one of the best experiences of the whole trip yeah i, I would agree well, yeah. you can't pick the same one, so what's the other? What's the other one? <laughs> I think the if I couldn't pick that, then it would be when we crossed from Botswana down by Francis Town mm-hmm. into Zimbabwe. Okay. And it was like a border crossing that's not very popular among travellers. And um, it took us through some very remote parts of Zimbabwe, like I mentioned earlier. And just crossing that border and seeing the, the colour change, that yeah. red African dirt uh, and the sun, it was quite late in the day, the sun was setting. Just the colours and like how yeah. vibrant the place was. And we ended up um, wild camping near a village because we were driving into the night, which we don't normally do. But just that drive with the sun setting over these painted huts was, I just really felt like oh, this is where we should be right yeah. now. Yeah. It was, it actually was quite an emotional evening <laughs> yeah because yeah, these these moments they do take your breath away and yeah you know, really put you on the spot of where you are yeah and it's hard to it's hard to do that oh uh, the number of times that i've been just had tears running down my face because yeah. the place that i was seeing i yeah. just like you think like how is this how am i this fortunate yeah yeah, yeah. to be able to experience that moment um in some place so beautiful yeah you know it's yeah. such a rarity mm-hmm. and it's important to allow ourselves to be in those places and yeah. like recognize how fortunate we are yeah to and to just to really remember those those moments for sure yeah so how do you guys find that you help support each other as a couple while you're traveling because a lot of couples do aspire to travel together yeah what are some things that you've learned about how um to keep your relationship strong and healthy because of course it's the most important thing yeah. at the end of all of this is that you guys are closer and and uh, more capable together than when you left. Yeah. So what are some of the things you've learned around that? It's definitely a test, isn't it? Because yeah. it's not normal to spend a year in a Land Rover with your partner yeah. Yeah. and not see that many other people, yeah. especially as we've come further north in Africa. There's not so many travelers up here um so surprised by that too yeah yeah there's not so many people up here so we don't have that social interaction so yeah um, up to Botswana we were going to campsites and there were other people here yeah. like you're traveling like us so you just socialize I think you definitely have to be patient at times and because when you're spending so much time together you get the good moods and the bad moods yeah, and sure. everyone has a bad mood everyone has a good mood and don't get me wrong there's times where we annoy each other <laughs> and that's and that's and totally you, normal oh it is normal and how do you what do you find works when you're stuck in the land rover and one of you is starting to feel annoyed is there a, like you guys have like a plan of like oh, we're going to put on your music or you're going to put in headphones or you're going to crawl under the back <laughs> or <laughs> take a walk <laughs> yeah yeah we, i mean we're pretty good at if there's been whatever a little heated yeah um moment or whatever we're pretty good at both just having some quiet time and then going back to each other and yeah. 
we nip whether it's stuff 20 minutes bud, or an good. hour yeah we nip stuff in the bud and yeah you just have to be um what's the word i'm looking for just understanding and i guess yeah that we're yeah. both in this situation yeah, yeah considering and, each other yeah, yeah. And, and literally we are um we're the two pieces that make this thing work yeah. so we're going to be at each other it's not going to work yeah. yeah so we take quiet time 20 minutes i think it's also important to know that in a relationship you're not going to get everything that you need from one human being that's why you have right. like different relationships friends, friends and family yeah. and stuff and so and the work we do on ourselves yeah exactly having ourselves. time alone yeah. is yeah. also really important and there's nothing wrong with that at all so you know we try to you know meet other people and be social in that way because mm. it's important to have connection with other people as well as just with each other and that's yeah, that's something that we try and do. I think when you're when you're overlanding, uh, the way we have been, we don't we don't really stay in accommodation at all unless we're in a city. So like Nairobi, we stayed in hotels for ten days. But you do need to take time to do things for yourself as well. Yeah, yeah. Whether that's doing a bit of exercise or or reading a book or something, because you can yeah. very easily slip into a a, a way of just you know, driving, setting up camp, yeah, and not really doing anything to to, to for yourself. Yeah, sure. We um, actually had that when we were in Zimbabwe. We had that where we were getting up early in the morning, driving all day, setting up camp. This was the same thing going on for weeks, and we were so close to the Mozambique border, and we thought, let's just go to the beach. So we did. Went to the beach and then decided that we were gonna. We were in Vilinculos, and then we decided we were gonna go down to Tofu. And we thought, let's learn to dive. So we did our paddy awesome. course. Yeah. Awesome. And we met friends there because we stayed in Tofu's one spot. Great. Oh. Yeah, so nice. We spent so nice. a month there. I wish much. we, yeah. Uh, we had we left the day our visa was running out. We would have stayed longer. But I mean, because it's almost free yeah. to be there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like the food is so inexpensive. Yeah. 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 And good. It was yeah, delicious. Amazing. The people are wonderful. Yeah. We made friends that are friends for life. We're already yeah. planning like trips with them and stuff. And it was we absolutely needed it at that time yeah, and it definitely. was so good for us and we recognized that and we did it and then we were like refreshed and actually a friend we met there jumped in the car with us and we did three weeks with her and she stepped in the back of the car and that's we traveled perfect. around together it was, awesome. it was just the best yeah, yeah that's so. perfect and making sure that you're at least giving yourself unless you have to because you're way behind but taking a day off from all of it mm -hmm. from mm. the travel from the blogging, from the vlogging, from the yeah. Instagram, taking a day off yeah. and, and going for a hike or going so in, important. going scuba diving or snorkeling mm. or yeah. surfing or whatever that yeah. is to kind of give yourself that little bit of a reset. Yeah. So one of the things I wanted to ask you about was your Alucab version on the Defender. Mm -hmm. um, I'm seeing them happen. They're more and more popular. And yeah. I, I'm actually interested in, in that for the 110 that I've got, which is very similar to yours. Mm -hmm. um, how have you found it? Like, what are some things that you like about it? What are some things that maybe you don't like as much? Actually, it's funny. We did a, a review on our YouTube last week. Yeah. Of this. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So people cool. can check that out. Yeah. 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 Well, give us the, give us the, uh, the note, the Cliff Notes version then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's been the best mod sing single modification we've done to the car. 100%. Just for this long-term travel, it makes everything so much easier. Being yeah. able to stand up in the back of your vehicle. Um, Away from the mosquitoes. Yeah, yeah, like last night, we were being absolutely hounded by <laughs> yeah, we mos were. killer mosquitoes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we said, right, let's just get in the car, put something on the iPad. And uh, yeah, actually play Monopoly Deal. Oh, we played some cards, yeah, <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> but um, the ease of use, yeah, yeah, it's just it's brilliant. So it pops up and it's you know angled from the front, yeah, and pops yeah. up in the back, yeah, and then so you guys can stand up in the vehicle, yeah. And then is there a conversion process to get the bed down, or does the bed just fall down as or? the roof yeah. pops up? Um, the, the bed goes up with it, mm. and then you pull that bed piece down got it you climb up onto the bed and then you pull the 
it's like a tank hatch. Yeah. Pull that piece down, and then the bed is the whole length of the oh, vehicle. Wow. Yeah. So it's a really big space as well. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And has it proven to be pretty reliable? Yeah. Yeah. You have a lot. You have quite a bit of weight even on top of mm. the, the camper. How are you finding that the vehicle's handling with all that weight up there? Um, it definitely does change the dynamics. Something I said in our video as well. Yeah. Um, but we put slightly wider tires on. Mm. I had I had I them on that, yeah. anyway, but yeah. um, I do feel that that does firm up the ride. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have heavy duty springs to help with the weight. Sure. So it does. It does still drive pretty well. Yeah. I mean, it, even it on does. the on the tarmac, going around corners and things, it's not like you're yeah, sure. driving yeah. a boat. It's yeah. it's pretty well not planted. Yeah. Also, we did because we were putting the roof rack and stuff on top. The gas struts for the paddy cab were That's a good upgraded. Point. Yeah. So that they could take the weight. The extra weight. Yeah. Paddy cab actually don't recommend you putting anything more than yeah. a roof rack on the the um, conversion itself but we've had no problems with it no it's been fine you could be worried about the the sill cracking maybe from the weight variations we haven't had that we don't have a huge amount on there we've got a solar panel two front runner wolf boxes a little bribe thing and a table table max tracks there's quite a lot of weight on that roof and a spade yeah I guess there is actually when you list <laughs> yeah. it. <laughs> it's amazing how it adds up. Yeah, yeah. it does. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We sure. try and trim it all the time, but yeah. you do need these these things when yeah. you're traveling the way we are. You yeah. do, and you guys are living. This is your home. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Well, Harry and Chloe, thank you so much for taking the time yes. with me today. It's been such a, a pleasure to meet both of you. I'm so glad we got a chance Likewise. to have yeah. lunch and we were scheming a little bit about how our travels could integrate and yeah. it, that may not work out, but it's always such a joy to connect with other travelers on the road, hear the stories, mm-hmm. maybe open our minds to other possibilities for routes or things to go see. Yeah. Uh, and this is, this is very much the same. So um, again, it's, it's the Landy expedition on Instagram yep. and it's the Landy expedition on YouTube. That's right. Uh, what's next for you guys? What's the next part of your, of your adventure? So next we're heading up to Uganda, Rwanda, and yeah. then we kind of have some big decisions to make as to yeah. where we go from here, what the end of the trip is looking like for us. So, yeah, stay tuned. Uh, yeah, yeah. For more about updates. That. <laughs> well, maybe we can get you back on the podcast when everything's all done. Yeah. yeah. And get the, get the final thoughts on all of final that. Cut. Yeah. And then you guys, have, you guys have got a fun trip planned to Australia and some other things. So yeah. Yeah. how exciting you guys are going to keep the adventures going. That's for it. sure. Yeah. Although this one feels like it's almost coming to an end now. We have to think about the, the next adventures. Yeah. So. It's definitely not the end for us. No, no way. It doesn't no sound way. like it at all. <laughs> no. Well, I appreciate you both so much for being on the podcast. And I thank you all for listening. And we'll talk to you next time. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Cheers. <laughs> and a special thanks to Real Truck for their support of this week's podcast. Find your freedom and follow your own trail in the fresh air of vast, uncharted places. Real Truck is inter- introducing their exclusive lineup of overlanding accessories designed to take adventurous explorers just like you into the furthest reaches with gear for camping, off-roading, and more, including the all-new Real Truck Go Rack, their Go Tent, and Overland Awning. And here's to those inspired, self-actualized souls brave enough to unplug and check into pure wilderness. And I've personally ordered products from Real Truck for our own Project 4xE Wrangler and was impressed by the clear communications and fast shipping. Bring your truck to life at realtruck.com. Thanks again, Real Truck.